what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so i'm out here in the shop this afternoon and uh i've made me a new purchase i bought a new hogan uh mag drill i've wanted one of these things for about 10 years or probably better uh but i always seem to make do with a hole saw and i've got a half inch drive uh, spade handle dewalt drill that turns about 450 rpms and so i usually make do with that but um on this project here when i narrowed that blade there i have got to drill some new holes on this cutting edge right here if you hadn't seen this video where i've narrowed this blade uh, basically i've got some new cutting edges over in the floor that are shorter by about this much on this main cutting edge which means this corner bit that i've cut off is actually longer than this and uh, anyway so we have to drill three new holes for this corner bit because it comes with three holes in it the other holes out here but the holes are going to be relocated back here further and as i say the other cutting edge i got shorter so we got to pull this cutting edge off and we may have to weld up these holes here depending on where the other ones fall at and drill new holes right here and uh, i don't know if that's five eighths or three quarter thick but uh anyway so decided to go ahead and order a mag drill i've got another little project coming up on this dozer as well we'll be needing this so we're going to get this thing opened up and check it out here i got some tape up here and see if we can drill a hole or two with it um, i went ahead and ordered the kit with the the cutters and stuff and the drill truck for the standard size bits as well your standard drill bits drills use annular cutters which is what we have here a set of those right there and i also purchased an extra one because this is a uh, 9 16 11 16 13 16 15 16 it's inch and 16 um, i ordered a 5 8 because those blade uh, bolts up there are 5 8 so i had to order it separate And what have we here? Oh, that's the uh, that's the adapter for the drill chuck there. Comes in a nice little case. Um, this is the smaller, I'll throw that over there. This is a smaller mag drill. I worked at a fabrication shop a really long time ago for a short period of time and uh they had one of these and uh it seemed to do everything we needed to do i drilled probably 1500 holes with it in like three days and uh so they're a very solid product in my opinion and uh they do make bigger ones but this one here will drill up to an inch and a half hole and for the most part i mean usually you don't need to drill a hole over about an inch inch and eighth and uh, so I figured this would be sufficient. And the weight of it is a lot lighter than the bigger drills. This drill here weighs about 30 pounds. And if you go with the bigger drills, um, they're about 45 pounds. So you have about 15, 15 pound weight penalty on the bigger drills. Uh, there are some cases, some applications where um, you need a bigger drill, but if I run into that, um, I'll order a bigger one, I suppose. But I think this here is going to uh, to do nine out of ten things I would need to do: drill holes uh, all the way up from stuff you drill with a small drill, um, with the with having this chuck here, or all the way up to, um, like I say, inch and a half is what it's rated for. Um, the cutters I got right here ordered, as I say, up to inch and sixteenth, and I figured that would be the the most that I would usually use something like this for. Um, it's also a two inch depth of cut. Uh, so it'll drill through two inches, uh, two inches uh, deep. Um, there is cases, say if you're trying to drill through, you know, a piece of three inch square tubing from one side, you would want to drill a bigger drill that's got more stroke. Um, but again, there's a 15 pound weight penalty difference. And if you're trying to hold something like this up, like I'm gonna have to do on the front of this blade right here to drill these holes, um extra 15 pounds uh you know trying to move it around and stuff can be a little bit of a headache and cumbersome so anyway let's get this thing all the way unwrapped here and see if we can get it put together and we'll try it out so 
So we'll start with the handle here. There are two ends to it. This is your safety chain here if you're going to be uh, using this on in the air or on a beam or something. Uh, you want to wrap that around there and tie it. That way if somebody unplugs your cord or if the magnet on the bottom here fails for some reason, uh, this don't fall off and hit the ground, break your drill, or hit somebody and uh, wind up hurting or killing somebody. So uh, anyway, we find the new cutter I got over here. This is our 5 8 cutter that I ordered. These cutters, uh, as long as you keep them cool, and uh, with this lubricant here, this comes in the okay in the kit there. They send you that little bit, and uh, you fill it up with water or whatever. That's all it takes to make a uh, a paint of coolant. So it's a 10 to 1 ratio. Seems like they could have went ahead and filled the bottle up for you and that way you could have made about a gallon of coolant, but I guess they didn't. I gotta put the pilot in here first too. So the kit comes with these pilots here that go down in here like that. And uh, you center punch where you want your hole, your center punch. Uh, hole that sticks in that pilot and spring loaded up in the drill and uh, so when you start putting pressure on the drill that comes down and uh, gets pushed back up inside of there and whenever it cuts through the spring pressure pops your drill plug out it comes with this wrench here that stores on top of your drill I believe like that and uh, goes down here to tighten this up has two flat spots on this uh, drill shank here and two screws to tighten up. So anyways, fits better in the case, a little snugger. So anyway, that's how that works. And this here has a coolant bottle that mounts up here. And it has a tube to connect to it and a little knob. I suppose the little knob is what holds it on there. This is kind of optional. Um, the one that I use at the fab shop did not have this. It had been taken off. And obviously this is not going to work if you are uh, drilling on the side like we're going to do. But anyways, if you're drilling straight down, it will work. So that's how the coolant bottle mounts up there. It's just this little old thing here that holds it up there. And you got your valve here. You pour your coolant in it, open it up. It goes through here and uh, keeps your uh, bit cooled and lubricated down there. And if you don't want to use this like we're going to be drilling on the side, you can fill you up a squirt bottle, um, mix you up your coolant in a squirt bottle, and keep that thing lubricated as you're using the drill. Um, also, this handle is reversible from side to side, I believe there. You can just swap sides with the, with the whole handle there. So I think this is going to be a pretty useful tool to uh, add to the shop here. I want to uh, mix up some water in here so that we'll have some cutting fluid and we'll go ahead and pull the cutting edge off of the uh, 
the blade up here so we can check out where to uh, drill these holes at. All right, guys, I've got all of the nuts and everything removed. I don't know if I said this a while ago or not, but I've got someone uh, supposed to be making me a new uh, skin for this blade here where this has got a hole in it from the previous owner. And uh, so we're doing that, and he's making me a couple other things as well. But uh, I've got this cutting edge off right here on this side. I've pull this one here off. The one I have to replace this only has seven holes instead of eight. So as I say, it's going to come to right here. And then the corner bit is going to be longer because we've narrowed this blade. And uh, again, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. That was loud. Um, anyway, so I'm probably going to have to raise this up here because the, the new cutting edge sticks down about an inch. So I threw around this cutting edge so it got into the bottom of the blade here, as you can see. But we're still all right. There's still plenty of depth there, but they run it longer than they should have. And you can look at uh, this here and you see how close this is to the center of the hole versus here. That's how long the cutting edge. So the one I got over there is longer now uh, or wider. You can turn these here upside down. They're reversible. But as I say, we narrowed the blade. So the cutting edges we're putting on are that much shorter on each side. And uh, you'll see that in a minute. Um, what I was saying about these these annular cutters a while ago, I don't know if I finished what I was saying, but uh, basically they last a long time. Um, when I was working in a fabrication shop there for a short period of time, we uh, I would get between five and 600 holes generally out of one of those cutters in like 3-8 steel. Um, we had a bunch of flanges that we would do that were just bolted flanges were stuff bolted together and uh, they were 3-8 steel. Um, of course, the thicker the steel, the less number of holes you're going to get. Um, those things are resharpenable, but you have to send them off or whatever. When they start getting dull, we usually just run them until they broke. Um, it's like $50 for one of those uh, cutters and the 5-8 size. Of course, the, the deeper the cut and the, uh, the bigger the hole, the more they cost, they got some that's like $300 if you want to get one of those six inch deep for the big drills, you know, by two and a half inch hole or whatever. Uh, those are really expensive. But uh, anyway, we're going to uh, get this cleaned up here and I'm going to have to pick this blade up. We're going to stick our other cutting edge here in the center and that's going to tell us how far over our corner bit has to be. And then we're going to mark our holes out and drill our holes here. All right, guys, so we've got the... Uh, Dirt cleaned off of there, got the blade picked up so that I have room to set my cutting edge up here. I've got some new bolts and everything. I'm just gonna stick a couple bolts in each side on the cutting edge just to hold it in place because we're gonna have to have this cutting edge removed in order to weld the new blade skin on here anyway. But uh, this will allow me to go ahead, figure out where my holes need to be and uh, get those drilled while we're waiting on the new uh, blade skin to be made. So here's our new corner bit. You see how much bigger and longer it is than the one we've chopped off. Get you guys to turn around here so you can see a little better. Hopefully you can see now. So uh, anyway, this is where the old cutting edge stopped at because we've narrowed the blade. And we got to get this up here and mark where our three holes is gonna go. And uh, these are supposed to have a little bit of gap in between them from the factory. Uh, probably about like that, eight to a quarter of an inch, I suppose. And uh, so anyway, I'll hold this up here and we're gonna get our holes marked here with a center punch. And then we can uh, drill them. All right, so I've got our new cutting edge up here. Just got a bolt on each end. Got the hole centered up here and snug down. I'm going to take this piece of cardboard and use for a spacer right here and then hold this up. I see a piece of uh, slag right here I need to get off. All right, so I've got this piece of cardboard here. I've got this cutting edge here centered. All the holes are centered. I've got a bolt in each end and it tightened down. 
and I'm going to use this cardboard as a spacer here in order to get the spacing on this uh, cutting edge here at least that's my idea and I've got to get it spaced down from the top to where the bottom edge lines up with the other bottom edge I may need to get a uh, straight edge over there cut this off a little shorter so it wouldn't be a little bit more precise all right so we're going to hold this here I don't know if I got enough hands to do all this. Put this here. And then this here should be the same as that right there. Should be. So that should be sufficient right there. there Maybe a slightly bigger gap than what we want, but that's about how the factory one was. Something like that. And we can cheat it over a little bit if we need to, but I think that right there is about what we want. I'll uh, hold the middle blade up here and see where we're at on it to make sure before I drill this, but that's what we're going for. We're going to double check this, uh, the factory setting on this edge here. Alright guys, so I loosened these bolts here back up and the factory edge had a gap between it here. As I say, the factory edge here are eight bolts long. These bolts are, are cutting edges are seven bolts long, so they're shorter, but they're supposed to be the same length from the end of the blade so that they would work out there. But they are not, they are off just a little bit. Uh, let's see here. I think this edge here would be more correct. Now, them are about two and seven eighths or so to the edge of the hole, and these are about three and a sixteenth to the edge of the hole. So instead of having a gap in the middle, we have an overlap in the middle, which means that each one of these holes here is in the wrong spot. Basically, they're going to have to be moved over. Uh, on each blade towards the outside of the blade um, looks like probably um, got a quarter inch overlap here so we'll probably have to move each hole over I'm about three sixteenths in order to have about an eighth inch gap in between here so I'm going to have to set the drill up hopefully we can trim off the a half a hole or it ain't going to be a half a hole it's going to be three sixteenths off of each hole and then reset this corner bit up and remark our location to get it correct I think I'm going to put that pilot on the edge of the hole there like that 
And uh, let me check this drill bit size first. It appears that that hole is a little bit bigger. So I need to move up a size in, uh, in drill bit here too. Let me do that. I would have thought you would have wanted a little bit more snug fit than that, but according to what the factory did, I guess it's not necessary. So, we'll go with 11 sixteenths. Which means I didn't really have to buy that bit. But, I guess we got it now, so. Shall we need to drill a 5 8 hole? We got a bit to do it. Use that pilot as the edge of the hole right there and cut backwards kind of like that right there and use that to uh to center our hole they make uh, these in a swivel as well but uh, I did not for the swivel base. Because I think it could also be something else that cause you problems. I think that right there is gonna work for us. Let's see if the coolant's gonna run out. We've got it on an angle here. But I believe it's gonna work. And it's spring loaded the coolant um, whenever you push the bit up, which is not going to work in this application, I don't believe. But oh, I've seen a little bit come out. We'll see what happens. That's why I didn't want to go with a, uh, a swivel base. So obviously this is not really made to drill a half of a hole like we're trying to do here. It's made to drill, you know, a whole hole, but you kind of see where this job's going.
we don't have the best uh, uh, surface for this magnet to stick to either. Not really helping. So, I mean, it's not really made to drill a half of a hole like I'm trying to do here, but I think we can make it work. I'm having to feed it really, really slow to keep it from wanting to walk, which is not really good. I mean, that's not really how you operate one of these. You need to be able to put, you know, kind of medium pressure on it um, to get the correct feed rate is better for the bit because um, it'll start cutting out, you know, bigger, a lot bigger chips than this. But you, you see the problem I'm having with the drill wanting to walk if I put any pressure on it at all. So I'm just kind of having to let it cut. It's going to be hard on the bit. That's, that's what we got to work with. So I'm sure you can see this would not be possible with any kind of regular drill. Um, there's just no way you could do this. So that's why I ordered this. I didn't know I was going to have to cut these holes from a half a hole size like this. Um, but it is what it is. They're gonna be slotted and it'll be adjustable to get it right. To get our gap right and everything. So anyway, I'm gonna cut you guys off and uh, I'm gonna finish drilling all these here and then I'll bring you back whenever we get ready to drill the hole holes for the uh, corner bits so you can see how that's gonna go. All right guys, I've got all the hole oblong. They're not perfect, but they're pretty good. I do believe that this is hardened steel. I don't think this is regular mild steel by looking at the chips that's coming off of it. All the chips are small. Um, of course, I'm not able to put a whole lot of pressure on it. I'll know more when I drill a full hole over here. We'll better tell more, but generally, uh, these cutters put off a long stringy, like a curly Q chip. And uh, you know, I'm getting little bitty chips like this is hardened steel and it's taking a while to cut through, which I suspect, I suspected it might be hardened uh, because the cutting edge goes on here and you know you probably want something hardened abrasive resistant down there in contact with your ground that way when you go through far on the cutting edge you know it don't just continue to eat through it but uh anyway i'm gonna set the cutting edge up here and get it lined up tighten up two bolts in each cutting edge and get it like i want it and that way we can mark and get our uh, corner bits down there
All right, guys, so I had a uh, hole here that didn't quite want to uh, line up where the drill walked on me the first time. And uh, so I just set the drill back up here and run back down through it. Got everything lined up. I got my gap here in the center like it came from the factory. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing down here and set up this uh, new corner bit. And uh, then we can drill some full holes here with the new drill. All right, guys, so of course my center punch holes is off now because of the way I did this originally. So I'm going to try to just leave this cutting edge corner bit setting up here and I've got it clamped into place. I've got my spacer set here. And uh, so I'm going to try to just set the mag drill up here on this and drill down through and that will uh, guide my hole. So we'll see how that method works. May not work great across that right there, but we'll see. All right, here we go. Definitely think that's hardened steel. The chips on these are usually even a lot longer than that right there and they'll wrap around the bit. That worked pretty good to guide the, uh, guide the drill down in there with no center punch though. So uh, I think I'm going to put a bolt right there and uh, go ahead and snug her down. That way it don't move while I'm drilling the other two out here. You imagine how long that would try to take to drill with a normal drill bit through hardened steel or even mild steel. It would take forever. Check our flatness across here. That looks good. And see, stuff like this is the reason I want to go with a small one because this is 30 pounds. If you add another 15 pounds to it, uh, the ease of moving it around is not going to be so great. Let's see, got the hole centered there.
Oh, I'm in the divot right there. I was gonna say the drill won't come on. It's got a little pin in the bottom of the magnet here. And if that's, it tells it it's not clamped down good. I was in that divot right there. I want to turn the drill a little to the side to make it work. Good now. guys that's just about a wrap um got everything drilled i'm right on the edge of this hole right here on this one i don't think that's going to be a big deal i could fill that hole in uh weld it up the one behind here but uh i don't think that's going to be a big issue but for those of you that never seen these that is the uh plug that it ejects out when it drills the hole uh, of course the bigger the bit the bigger the plug will be but that's what comes out of the backside. And as I say, by looking at those chips and everything, I would definitely say that that is, uh, that is hardened. And you can see how brittle that is. It just breaks. A normal chip will fold, and that's brittle, it breaks. Uh, Cause that was a little bit difficult to drill, but we got the job done. Back up here and to get a little bit of a look at it. I'm not going to put all the bolts in there right now, as I say, because uh, I'll have to remove these in order to weld right here easier at a better angle, I believe. At least that's what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do, depending on how, how he uh, makes the metal there. It'll be easier to get my, my MIG gun in there and weld that up. So I'm just going to leave it like that right there for now. And... Uh, wrap this video up i will put a link in the description for the mag drill if uh anybody thinks they need something like that to do a similar project or any kind of hole drilling whether you're trying to drill a, a big truck frame or you know something on the side or, or flat like it's setting whatever you're trying to drill that drill there is supposed to drill up to an inch and a half that's 11 sixteenths bit that we got in there and you see the hole there and uh, as I say, that's not regular mild steel. It's obviously something hardened. I don't know what it is, but it's harder than regular mild steel. So anyway, link in the description for the drill. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.